So I think the nurses are now getting to the place where they're knowing, they've heard CAR-T, they have some understanding of it. Um, as transplant nurses, we've been working very hard to highlight uh, CAR-T uh, therapy for some time now. So we know that uh, CAR-T is essentially a engineered T-cell, a souped-up T-cell that is trained to go in and identify a specific antibody and, well, essentially kill it um, on the cancer cell. So uh, there's various different ones available um, and it depends on what product you're using, where they target. So there is a range of uh, toxicities associated with CAR-T therapy. Um, you've got some ones that we would be used to dealing with, so tumor lysis syndrome, um, sepsis, uh, something that our, as haematology nurses is our first thought when everyone gets a temperature. Um, but there are some more unique and uh, specific side effects and toxicities associated with CAR-T therapy like cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. It's very protocol driven really and especially in the licensed products there is some real uh, lead on the, on the license as to what we have to do with the management of uh, especially cytokine release syndrome. So in cytokine release syndrome the uh, first line of treatment is a drug called tocilizumab on our wards, we have to have four doses of these uh, dispensed and available on the ward prior to the administration of both commercial products. Um, and this is an IV drug, it's given over an hour, can be given by any IV competent trained nurse um, and is generally very well tolerated. It can be given um, for up to four doses um, at eight hour intervals for treatment of CRS. Um, second line treatment for CRS is generally uh, steroids. Um, it can be given on our wards or at this stage maybe our patients are gone to intensive care. There is a couple of different uh, other antibodies that are being used uh, that interfere with the um, cytokine storm at different parts. Um, but they're certainly all uh, in uh, development at the moment. The second most common toxicity for uh, patients receiving CAR-T therapy is that of neurotoxicity. And again, this is something quite unique to CAR-Ts. However, we have become uh, used to assessing these in the, usual, in the use of uh, the bite technologies as well, which also cause um, neurotoxicity. Um, there's been some new grading systems that have just come out over the last couple of months. So all the work that we were doing at uh, standardizing our grading systems has all had to change. So I think it's really important that our nurses on the ward are trained uh, to use the grading systems appropriately. The treatment for neurotoxicity as an entity on its own is with steroids. Um, if it's in concurrence with uh, CRS, we give it with tocilizumab as well. The patient journey is obviously something that is close to all nurses' hearts and we try to uh, make the journey as easy as possible for the patient. Um, it's usually quite a long process. Um, our patients are coming from sometimes quite far away because there's only a certain amount of centres that are able to deliver this therapy. Um, so our patients could be outside of their usual environment, away from their support network, um, away from their families coming into a centre where they've never met any of the doctors, any of the nurses, um, so it's about making them feel uh, welcome and safe and that they can trust us. Um, so the point of referral is very important and that first meeting and explaining to the patient uh, what's going to happen to them. Uh, I guess for the patient the next big step is the apheresis, uh, so meeting our apheresis team, having this, the T-cell collection and explaining to the patient what's going on at each point, um, ensuring that they know that they're going to be hooked up to the apheresis machine for perhaps four hours, um, encouraging them to bring something to keep themselves occupied um, and then explaining what happens to their cells once they're disconnected from the machine because it's normally four to six weeks then before the patient actually receives the infusion back. In that time period, our patients might need bridging therapy. So again, that's a very important um, stage where the nurses will be involved. And if at all possible, that should be delivered in the local center so that the patients are back in their familiar um, zone, uh, surrounded by their family. Um, and then, of course, you're working them up for the infusion. And to do that, you need to ensure that they have good organ function. Um, so you're arranging lots of tests for them, lung function tests, heart tests, kidney tests. And again, keep 
uh, point to that is communication and it's usually a nurse coordinator or perhaps a nurse specialist that's uh, coordinating all of these especially if the patients are coming from far away. So then the patient is coming in for their consent. Again, this is a big point for the patients. They're hearing about this therapy and in a consent fashion and they might need, they will hear about all the toxicities, the potential side effects, the fact that it doesn't get rid of the cancer for everyone, the fact that they very likely they'll go to intensive care, the follow-up that they'll need, and this is a lot to take on. So again, the nurse plays a key role in this, ensuring that the patients understand what's, what's been said to them. And then I guess we're talking about lymphodepletion, which is usually three days of chemotherapy, usually two different drugs. It's about explaining to the patient what's going to happen for lymphodepletion, where that's going to take place, Sometimes it takes place in as an inpatient. In some centres, it takes place in ambulatory care. Um, and then, we, of course, you have the infusion day. For all patients, it's a big day. And for nurses that are administering the cells, it's a big day because we still only have limited experience with these infusions. So we're training all the time, and there's a lot of pressure on the nurse that's giving the infusion, and the patient's expectations are quite high. Oh, then we have a period of uh, close monitoring, which of course we're monitoring for all the toxicities. The patients normally stay in hospital for about 10 to 14 days um, and then they're discharged. Uh, they do have to stay within the locality of the centre though that's given the cells, normally at least two hours um, within the region of the centre. Um, and then each hospital will have an individual model for, for follow-up, but at least assessing the patient twice a week with blood tests checking their neurological status, ensuring that the carer is educated to be able to monitor for the side effects and bring the patients in early if they need to. Um, I guess the, one of the biggest points for the patient is disease reassessment and uh, they're all looking to that. They're looking for that PET scan or that bone marrow that will show that they're in remission where they've never been there before for a prolonged period of time. Um, so breaking that news of the result of the scan or the bone marrow is really important, be it positive or negative news. Um, so the nurses need to be there to support their patients through that. As part of the EBMT Nurses Group, we're constantly trying to improve education for not only CAR-T therapy, but of course transplantation and haematology um, in general. Uh, we will continue to focus on CAR-T therapy in uh, the EBMT meeting in Frankfurt in March. And we're uh, hoping to develop some nurse study days as well. Uh, there will be one run in London in September, focusing specifically on CAR-T therapy. Um, and we're hoping to do some collaborative work as well with some centres across, across Europe to standardise some, some of the assessments and the care for nursing.